Hey, it's Marquetta Breslin, and welcome to another episode of Marquetta Breslin Live. And tonight, I'm going to be starting a series where I walk you through the process of making a closure from scratch. I'm super excited. We'll get started right when I return. To help you start making deposits We building a team full of winners from novice beginners to moguls with profits And moguls that's profits Steady for greatness we strive We dropping them gems over here Tune in to my quarter we live All right, it is time to get into it. But as always, I love to commune and say hello to everybody over in the chat. So I'm going to do that before I get into this teaching. So, hey, listen, if you're just coming in, make sure to say hello in the chat. Packer Chick, what's up? Hello. Jeff says, OMG, I can't wait. I'm so excited too. Rhonda, Rhonda, I saw you were here at like four o'clock. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, Kina. Good evening, Queen A's Lux. Hello, how are you, Sherry Anderson? How are you, Shawty Knox? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for coming in from LinkedIn. Uh, Tiffany Hodges, how you doing? Um, let's see, let's, Latoya Benson, Grand Rising, everyone. Hey, Margarita. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I actually get called Margarita a lot. The last time I got called Margarita was at a bank and everybody turned around and looked at me like, is her name really Margarita? So yeah, funny joke. All right. Boy Mom 72. Hello, Vicky German. How are you? Elle Herring. Hello. <laughs> I think you're trying to correct it. You probably are getting caught up, Shawty, by uh, uh, autocorrect, which is so fun. Robin Harris, how are you? Unique the Yes, hello. <laughs> Kirk and Doll. I'm a little slow tonight. Uh, hello, how are you? JOK, how are you? Brenda Johnson says, good evening, Marquetta and friends. Thank you for sharing this blog and teaching with us. Much love from New York. Brenda, you're going to enjoy tonight's live because I have some footage from New York once we get into talking about the hair part. Tiffany Lucas, how are you? Sandra Brooks, hey, how are you? JOK says, hello. Amber Graham, hey. Hair by Milk and Honey. Hey, Marquetta, hey. Mia Walker Gonzalez, hello. Carrie, hello. Isaiah, hey, hey, everybody. Monica Steven from Tennessee, not too far from where I'm from in North Carolina. Pineapple Crush Me, hello, everyone. Midwest Beauty Charm, hello. Cassandra McGee, hello. McNatural, hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in with me tonight. Do me a favor before I get into this teaching because it's going to be so good. I want you to like and share. If you're on Facebook, hit that share button. Share this with anybody who loves wigs and who wants to get into the wonderful world of making wigs. Uh, if you're on YouTube, share it, like it. Let's get into it. And listen, before I get deep into it, you see a number scrolling across the bottom. That is the number to text me. All right. Um, I was just talking to my husband earlier about texting back and forth with uh, some of you in there. So be sure to jot my number down or shoot me a text right now. Nine times out of 10 is me 
replying to those text messages. But sometimes, um, especially with that customer service stuff, my team jumps in there because it's really not supposed to be used for customer service. Um, it's for me to communicate back and forth. But sometimes people do reach out and do customer service and my team will jump in and help out. All right. So tonight I'm so excited because I'm going to be talking about um, the process of making a closure. It's one of the easiest projects to start practicing with. Really, what I think is the easiest project is probably a mustache. But tonight, we're going to start the process of making a closure. So this is actually go going to be a series that I'm going to do. And tonight is the first part, uh, the planning part. And this is the part that a lot of people don't know what to do. But tonight, I'm going to be talking about choosing the right hair, making sure that you choose the right size, choosing the right lace, and so much more. So I'm going to get right into it. And then as I'm teaching, I'll jump over in the chat and see if you have any questions or anything like that. And then we'll wrap up for the night and we'll be right back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for part two. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to making a closure piece, you have to first determine the purpose of this closure piece. Why are you doing it? What is it going to be used for? Because that's going to determine how you build it and how you make it from scratch. It's going to determine the size, the hair, and all of that stuff. So I always take a step back and say, okay, what am I doing this for? Am I making this for a wig? Is it going to be for a sew-in? What am I doing it for? And then I build from there. So you're it's like you're starting from the end and you're building backwards. All right. Always remember that, you know, ever for a project like a closure or a lace wig, or even if it's a hybrid wig, you never want to, to just start and just go and say, I don't know what this is going to be for unless you're just practicing. Okay. So that's a very, very, very important part to this whole thing is making sure that you start with your planning first. All right. So nine times out of 10, by the time you get to the point where you're saying you're going to make a closure piece, you already know what it's going to be for. So now your next step is going to be in the hair. What kind of hair are you going to use? What is the texture going to be, the density and all of that stuff? All right. So let's start with density. And listen, these steps are in no particular order. But starting with density, so this is one of the biggest factors to when I get that question of how long does it take to make a closure or how long does it take to make a lace wig? One of the biggest factors in that question is what density are you doing? Because by definition, when it comes to hair, density is the number of hairs per square inch. Now, if you think about that definition and then you think about different textures of hair, you can have really dense, fine hair, or you can have really thin hair with thick diameters of hair that appears to be thicker than it really is. So you have to consider density, and then you consider texture. With curlier textures like this, obviously, this wig right here, don't, this is, yeah, we need work. And maybe we'll work on it one day on the live. But this was a wig that I made a couple years back. This hair is super dense. So it did not take a lot of hair to build up to get it to this density. All right. It's not a full lace wig. It's just a lace closure wig. Um, but it didn't take a lot of hair to build up to this density. So you first have to consider that because the last thing you want to do is waste money buying hair. All right. Quality of hair is also another factor. Um, I do have I have one student that I can think of in my mind right now that specializes in making synthetic wigs. Um, it may be more than one now, but I just remember her because she reached out to me uh, just recently um, because she just enrolled in Lacewood University. But she loves making synthetic pieces. And so you have to think in your mind how much, first of all, if you're making this for a client, what is their budget, right? What are they willing to spend? So you have to factor that into your pricing. Pricing is a whole nother, that's a whole nother live for a whole nother day. <laughs> I cover that in extensive detail in Southlake Swing University. 
But um, when it comes to hair, you have to factor in all of those things. So density, texture, and then type. But let me go back to texture for a moment. So when it comes to texture, curlier hair denses up quicker. Um, some of your relaxed textures are going to also dense up quicker than um, uh, something that's really fine, like a silkier type of texture, like a, um, a Vietnamese hair. Vietnamese hair, actually, the diameter of that hair is pretty thick. I'm trying to think of something that's super thin. Some of the blonde pieces, depending on where you purchase it from. So if you if it's true, authentic blonde hair that's purchased, like, let's say from a Russian donor, that some of those uh, ponytails, the hair in those ponytails are a lot more thin than other hair, depending on where it came from. Let's say if it was over in India or whatever like that. So you really have to understand the type of hair that you're dealing with and what that end result is going to be before you can even approach hair. All right. So for this particular uh, wig that, well, closure piece is going to end up being a wig. But this particular closure piece that I'm going to be making, I purchased this hair a couple of years ago. I have some footage that I'm going to show you here in just a second. A couple of years ago, I went on a tour. And on this tour, I went to different cities. I think it was like four or five different cities where I did my one day lace wig boot camp. This was pre-COVID. And we traveled to all these cities. We were gone for 10 days. And when we got to New York, I really wanted to go back to this place that I purchased hair from years before. And the name of the place was Lugos. I finally ended up going back to Lugos to purchase hair. I'm gonna play, actually, let me just play the video and then I'll pop back on the screen. So here's the footage. Oh, I wanted to experience riding the subway and see what that was like. And it was really, really cool. But we took the subway all the way to Lugos Hair Club. Oh my gosh. It's been like 10 years since I was last there. And the last time I was there, it was on Flatbush. Um, and I don't remember the crossing street. But this time it was in Manhattan and it was amazing. So at Lugos, you can do so many different things. You can custom the, customize the color of your hair and you can customize the texture. They can blend textures together. They do it right there on the spot. Um, if you're not in New York, they can ship it to you. But let me tell you, it is amazing. All of the hair there is double drawn. So you don't have to worry about um, the short strands when you're ventilating if you're gonna use this hair to make a wig. So I, I ordered some, I didn't order the hair. I, I, well, I did order the hair, but I had it done on the spot. And then um, I had some wefts done on the spot as well. So I'm gonna make this amazingly gorgeous piece that I just might sell. I'm thinking about selling this piece. Oh, <laughs> so look, I was just looking at the hair. So I have the hair right here. This, I went on tour, I think it was 2018 or 2019. I want to say it was 2019. And I am still, it's still in its original packaging because I've just been so busy that I haven't been able to do it. So this is what it looks like. This is what I'm going to start working with when we start building this thing from scratch tomorrow. So this is the hair that I uh, purchased from Lugos. But of course, you know, there's hair from many different places that you can purchase from. I'm getting ready to show you some footage right now. You can find this full video on my YouTube channel, but y'all know that I have a special place in my heart for Indian hair because I've been over to India. I've felt the hair. I've seen the women. I've been to all the different factories and stuff. And um, it's just beautiful hair. And what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the textures that we see and wear come from Indian hair because it's so readily available because so many people are going to the temples. Well, I'll say we're going to the temples on a daily basis pre-COVID to uh, donate their hair for religious reasons. All right. So here's some of that footage and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about hair and then we'll move on to talking about lace. So these are the ponytails. Mm -hmm. These are the ponytails. Oh wow! Look at this one. Wow. So this one's colored. 
No, no, no. These are all raw potatoes, not colored. I think he's talking about the roots. Yeah, see, these ones, uh, th before they cut it, they would have already dyed it. Yeah. This so this goes predominantly to Africa. Oh, Africa. Ah, African, Angola? Yeah, Angola, Mozambique. Okay. They buy this in a large quantity. Mm, okay. So... Can I see the gray one? Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at those right there. Oh my goodness. These are also curlies, but these are... These have... Color? Yeah. Oh. So oh these won't uh, come to the States. Hmm. Oh, this feels... Look at this. Mm -hmm. It's so soft. Yeah. These are ready... No, these are... These are bulk hair, madam. This is... If most people buy it like this, yeah, that's that is in Africa wig makers. That's what I do. And all they buy it like yeah. this, and then they and then use it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Look how short these are. <gasps> oh, yes. Do you do any curling with steam? No, no, no. All of this is natural. Nice. Here we mainly produce. Like this is them looking, they will be really soft. It's just raw hair as it is. Nothing has been done to it. Wow. So, <coughs> from the textures to everything, everything is raw. And you can wash it how many other times you want, nothing's gonna happen. So, it's, before shipping out, it's just washed, conditioned, and shipped. Some clients, they don't want it washed, they wash it themselves. But most clients prefer it like this. Yes, <laughs> yes. prefer it to be washed. Because some people assume, see, once this texture comes, nah, they assume it's not raw anymore. Oh. But we just tell them, no, we just wash it. <laughs> we just wash it. <laughs> They'll see that. They'll be like, why isn't it like that? Oh. Say we wash it, crunch it, and then it's hanged. So that's why this pattern comes. However, it else, dries, yeah. yeah. These are grey curly closures. Do you make those here too? Yeah. <coughs> it's our people who make the closures, they aren't here because uh, there are a lot of, uh, what can you say? For fronters and closures alone, there's a lot of poaching, madam. So oh, yeah. They, they, we've set this up really far, far away. Oh, you have straight too? Yeah, yeah, we have straight hair. Now, how do you get the straight? Is this? I'll, I'll show you the wefted bundles down. Straight hair is from women who have straight hair. Okay. Meaning only about 10 to 15 percent max women have straight hair in India. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Oh, I got that back there. Which one? Oh, this is a curly bundle. Oh, yes. Ah. Oh my gosh. That curl yeah. pattern. But then this yes. is like really rare. You say rarely? <laughs> yeah, rare because uh, so beautiful. most Indian women do not have an af afro curly like texture. Right. Wow, amazing, right? So that was so much, there was so much more. I mean, I have hours upon hours upon hours of footage from different factories um, because I brought a videographer with me over to India. And the amount of information that was shared from each different factory, this one included. So this particular factory uh, had hair. Those curly textures of hair that you saw in the video were not steamed. I don't know if you heard in the video, but they don't steam textures at this particular factory. Um, and that hair was not steamed at all. That was a natural curl pattern of the donor's hair. Now, I know you're thinking like, yeah, right. How can it be that uniform? But being over in India for the, the 
time that I was there for 10 or 11 days, however, I don't remember how long I was there. That those women, some of those women really do have uniform curls like that. Hair just gorgeous. I mean, Rob and I, that was Rob Fuchs in the video. He's um, an instructor inside Lace Week University, amazing hairstylist. Go follow him, check him out. Rob and I, as we were passing by the different places that we were going to, we're like, oh my gosh, did you see her hair? Oh, did you? Oh, I, and we could, we just stopped saying it after a while because it was so many women with beautiful hair. So that was natural. Now, there are some companies who will steam to get certain textures like this um, uh, yakky type texture, which is what this Lugos hair is right here, or um, a super like this even, the super kinky texture, and then some of the other textures. So that does get processed with steam. Um, and then they use these, these metal rods. There's a name for them. But I, the name is on the tip of my tongue. I'm sure it'll drop in my head before the end of this live. But they uh, texturize it with different types of things and they steam it. And then that's what we get. But um, so the selection of hair in the process of you making your closure piece is very important because it's going to determine your end result. So just make sure you do thorough research, especially if this is going to be a piece that you're going to wear or if it's going to be a piece that a client is going to wear, do thorough research and make sure that you select hair that's actually going to look nice and that's going to behave and do what the client wants it to do. All right. I'm going to jump over here to the comments for a few minutes just to see what's going on over here and see if you guys have any questions. And then I will continue on with this live. And tonight, if you're just tuning in, I saw a whole bunch of people just join we are tonight talking about how to make a closure piece from scratch. This is actually going to be a series that I'm doing, and this is part one. We're talking about planning, how to choose, making sure you choose the right hair, making sure that you understand the assignment. I'm just kidding. That you understand the purpose of the closure piece. What is it going to be used for so that you can build accordingly? All right, I'm going to hop over here in the comments and see what you guys are talking about. And then we'll jump right back into training. OK, uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Rhonda. I do have excellent customer service. Yes, my team is amazing. Uh, amazing. I am too, Precious. I'm glad you didn't miss this live. Uh, let's see. Yes, Vicky. Pricing is so important. I told you, Brenda, you were going to know. You were going to like this one. I know Lugos. Sandra says, love Lugos. I used to get braiding hair there. I did too. That's how I found them. I used to live in New Jersey. I lived with my, um, my Aunt Donna and my cousin Shaquan and Lati. Um, I lived up there with them, and she introduced me to that hair, and I, I was just in love. And I always said that I was going to go back, but I, I went back to Jersey a, several times, but just never went back to Lugo. So, yep, it's still there. Izzy, I know that is amazing. You color the hair, texturize it, and color it. That's amazing. All right, here we go. 504 Darling says, is it okay to use synthetic hair and netting with spaces that resemble Swiss lace to practice knotting? Yes, you can use, um, and it's, I'm saying yes blindly without seeing what you're using because sometimes netting doesn't have the same type of hexagons that you see in lace. The netting is a little bit different. You might have little squares instead of hexagons. So it just, it all depends. Um, one thing that you can practice on, oh, I have it right here. So one thing that you can practice on right here on this cap, you see this netting that's right in, in my face, it's right here. This is great to practice ventilating on. This is nothing but weaving net. Um, this is a stretchy kind, but you could just go and buy a weaving net out of the beauty supply store to practice on in the beginning with your ventilating needle. Why? Because the holes are large and you can see what you're doing. All right. Once you get the hang of it, though, 
don't ever, <laughs> you, you don't want to use that to make pieces unless you're like making an integration piece or something like that. That's a whole nother lie for a whole nother day. Okay. So yes, you can just be mindful that um, the more, the deeper you get into making these things, the more intricate some of your pieces can be depending on the type of lace you're using, which I'm going to talk about lace in just a second. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, yep. L Herring said, yep, that's what I'm doing. I'd say yes. Highly recommend as a beginner. I agree. See, Jay, what's up, Jay? It was 2019 in New York. I was one of your students. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I had so much fun. I think New York was our last stop too. And we went out for that day. We ate at BBQ's. Uh, we just went around New York. We rode on the subway and that full video, which is on my YouTube channel. Um, this was, you could tell it was pre COVID because when we got on the subway, it was, we were like this, it was packed. There were no seats and you had to stand up, but that was my first time riding the subway. Even though I lived in Jersey, I never took the subway anywhere in New York. So I really wanted to do that and it was fun. So you can see all of that footage though on that video on my YouTube. I'll link it underneath this video once we get off. Um, all right, I saw some more questions in here. Let me just make sure that I hit those questions. Ah, will any, I'm guessing you mean vendors, be available to purchase? I don't sell any type of vendor information or anything like that. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Um, but, and I'm trying to think if I know of anyone who does do that. If I do know of anyone who does that, y'all know I'm super transparent. I will let you know um, as soon as I find somebody, but I'm not looking. But if somebody <laughs> runs across my mind that I trust, I will share their information with you. <laughs> yes, exactly. The assignment was understood. <laughs> yes. Yes, Nancy. Okay, Nancy, with the upgraded profile picture. That is a gorgeous picture of you, Nancy. Yes, that is a perfect segue into um, this next part that I'm going to teach. It's about lace. All right. Lace is so incredibly important because it helps in determining the outcome of your project. Now, I have in front of me a piece of opera lace. This is the opera lace that we actually sell on the website. You can already look at this lace and see, like, it's super thick. This is also, opera lace is also called French lace or base lace. All right, it's super thick very durable, but it's not something that you would put on a hairline. Okay. This is not what you would use for that. I had people ask me before at live events, Hey, can I just use opera lace because the holes are bigger? And my answer is you can do whatever you want, but I wouldn't suggest it. And the reason why this is called opera lace is because a sturdier lace was needed in the opera houses when they were making the wigs because they needed it to be sturdy enough to attach the microphone to. So if you've ever been to a play, like a Medea play or something like that, Medea's microphone is sometimes attached right here um, on her wig. So that's what why it was called opera lace, but now it's called base lace and sometimes even French lace, okay? But that's what this is. This is the same lace that I use I mean, I've been using this lace right here for years for different projects, but not closure pieces or frontals. Okay. Then I have a piece of this HD lace right here that I sell on the website. This is what I'm going to be using for the closure piece. Now I pause when I say that, because if you have a piece of this lace, you know the challenge that it can present. But I have this lace up against my skin right now. You can barely see it. And I haven't even colored the lace. I mean, it is amazing. So here's the thing. You can look and you guys won't be able to see this here, but I'll show you tomorrow when uh, we start building the actual foundation for the closure piece. But the holes in this lace are significantly smaller than the holes in this lace. But let me say another, let me talk about this 
HD lace situation for a minute. I'm using this HD lace because I know how to handle my pieces, right? I know, I know that this lace is fragile. I know that I can't do a whole, like I gotta be very, very careful with this lace. So I'm equipped to, to handle this lace as a wig wearer and as a wig maker. A lot of people think that because everybody is talking now about HD lace that you should just automatically gravitate to HD lace because that's the most invisible. And it is amazing. However, not every project requires you to use HD lace. In a lot of times, in a lot of cases, film lace would do just fine or a coated lace. All right, so it doesn't always have to be HD lace. It depends on the project. If you're making something like in Lacewig University, the wig that I make inside Lacewig University is for my daughter. I'm not gonna use this on her because she is rough with her hair pieces and I will not waste time making a wig that I know is not going to last if I use this amazing lace on her. So I just used a coated film lace for the front part of her wig. And then we used a different type of base lace in the back because the holes were bigger. All right. So the type of lace you choose is determined by what you want the end result to be, which is why it is important that for every company that you work with concerning wigs, concerning making wigs, most of these companies have lace sample booklets and I highly suggest that you order a lace sample booklet, all right? From whoever it is, Ali Arbasi, the wig department, Jagazi Naturals, Fishbach Miller, whoever it is, okay? Uh, now, it's choosing lace. And now um, I wanna talk about sizing because sizing also matters, especially when you're factoring in your pricing because most people think, oh, it's a closure piece. It's small. It shouldn't cost that much. However, in, you do have some instances where somebody may order, and I call them an oversized closure piece. I had um, a stylist order a five by five. Well, really, it was five by six closure piece. That's big, all right? And it took me a long time <laughs> to finish that piece because of the way I had to be built. So don't underestimate closure pieces because the wider they are, obviously the longer it could potentially take you depending on the density and the type of hair and the lace that you're working with. Okay, so size matters. So you have to say, okay, in your consultation, what are you using this for? Okay, you're using it for a, um, um, a sew-in. So if you're using it for a sew-in, uh, will a three by three by four work? And so you just take notes as you're doing the consultation. If it's a wig and they're um, making what I call a hybrid wig, which is where really a hybrid wig is a term that I coined back in 2017 uh, when I relaunched Lace Wig uh, Training System 2.0. And a hybrid wig is basically a situation like this, but you don't use a pre-made cap. You make even the cap from scratch, all right? Using the same type of materials and all of that good stuff, okay? So let's say it's going to be this type of wig where you're incorporating wefts and you're ventilating as well in, the, in a closure piece in the top. Well, you have to determine how much of that closure piece is going to be needed because if you're like me and my Aunt Donna, shout out to Aunt Donna if she's watching right now, I like can't wear my hair in a side part. And if it's my natural hair, I can, but in my wigs and stuff, it just, I don't know why, but I always gravitate to a middle part. And I know I'm not going to change that. So with that being said, there is no reason for me to even have a section this big to ventilate. I'm going to make that thing skinny, okay? Because for I'm not I don't I know I'm not going to change the part and I don't want to waste time. All right? So that's something else to consider. 
that's one of those things where when you're making a piece and when you're doing this for a profession and you're doing your consultation, you can save yourself time and save the client, potentially save the client money by having that thorough consultation and saying, hey, do you, are you going to move this part around? No. Okay. Then we don't need to do a big, huge section where we're ventilating. That's the beauty of this crab. You don't have to stay stuck doing one thing. All right. You're only limited to your imagination. I say that so many times throughout Lacey University because this, there's, this is just the most amazing crab. So determining the size is important. Some wig caps that you work with that are pre-made like this um, will already have a section up here for you to put your own lace and ventilate. And that's great. However, um, let's say it doesn't have that. You can cut that out and you can put your own lace over it and ventilate and be done with it. Okay, so planning is critical. Planning is key. You want to make sure that you approach your um, closure piece with understanding everything that goes into it. Sizing, the right lace, the right hair, uh, what is the purpose, what is it going to be used for, and all those things, they factor into what you're creating. All right, I'm going to jump over here in the comments, and then I'm going to do some more teaching. All right. Uh, Sybil says, hey, Mark, quite a family and team. Great to be here. Thank you again. Oh, you are so welcome. Uh, Cassandra Bivens Williams says, thank you so much for sharing. I have purchased almost all of your material. I love it. Thank you so much. Y'all just don't know. Um, when I, when, when we say thank you, cause I say it for my husband and I, but when we say thank you, we really mean that. Like that's, I will never forget being in the Air Force, because we started this business while we were both active duty in the Air Force at Langley Air Force Base. We didn't have a clue what we were doing. We used to burn DVDs out of our apartment <laughs> and on our lunch break, go to Staples and get the DVD covers printed and mail them out. That's how this business started. And so to hear people say like you to say, hey, I've purchased everything and I love it. And even to hear people say, I've been with you since your kids were babies is amazing to me. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, no matter when you found me, whether it was last month or if it was, I don't know, last year, all 20 years ago, I don't know. <laughs> We've been in this game for a long time. We're going on, we're going on year 19, so... Uh, I'm so incredibly thankful. It is a blessing to be able to do what we love every single day. And we still love it. 19 years strong. It's amazing. Oh, you're so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What advice can you give in double knotting? I find it super difficult to double knot. The first piece of advice that I will give you is slow down because the most common mistake that I see people make when it comes to double knotting is that they're just trying to go too fast because it's, it's a lot going on. You just made a knot and then you don't want it to unravel. So you want to hurry up and you want to make the other knot. But when you're making the double knot, if you get that first knot and make sure it's tight down to the block, then it should be easier to come back and make the other knot. The name of the game when it comes to double knotting is control. As long as you have control over that hair, then you'll find your groove. But it does take a little bit to get used to with double knotting. But the, the piece of advice that I'm going to give you is slow down. I don't even know if you're going fast, but that was the first thing that popped in my mind is just slow down because that's the most common thing that people do when it comes to double knot. They try to go really, really, really fast. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. The honeycomb shaping is not there. Mm. Okay. This is um, the next part to your question. The honeycomb shaping is not there. I think I have a weaving net and I'm just starting. I tried to find, uh, I tried to find Swiss lace sample and, I can't see the holes. Mm. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, listen. Oh, oh, finally. So I've been talking about this light for like the last two weeks that I've been the last few lives. I'll say that. And it's a portable light. And I finally put it on my desk for me to show y'all tonight. Okay, this is the company. Again, when I show things on here, I don't get a commission from these companies. If and when I do, I will let you know. Okay, so this is, you can't see this. I'm not even going to try it. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at myself. Okay, this is <laughs> a pocket light. It's called Pocket Light F7 RGB LED light. Okay. This is what it looks like. This is what the box looks like. I know somebody's going to be like, can you repeat that? It is a pocket light, P-O-C-K-E-T-L-I-T-E, P-O-C-K, -E -E -E, like pocket, L-I-T-E, light. All right. Uh, F7, RGB, yep, that's it right there, RGB LED light. My producer is going to pop it up on the screen here in just a few minutes. It comes in this cute little case. Let me do the YouTube thing. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Okay, this is, I don't know if this is charged. I'm just giving you a heads up. All right, this is what the back looks like. <laughs> okay, um, and this is what the front looks like. Okay, this is a light. You can put it on a normal tri tripod because it has a little screw right here. But let me turn it on and see. It has a power button and it has these settings here. Okay, so I don't want to, well, you can already see here how bright this light is, but you can control the brightness right here. Okay, and then what you can also control is the colors of the lights with this button right here. Okay. Boom. Oh, there it is. There it is right there. Uh, and this is, this is the exact one. It's only 139. Let me tell you, this is not just, this isn't for ventilating or anything. This is for film. This is for um, videographers to put on the top of their camera uh, on their camera setup. So this is a very, very um, amazing light. All right. So this is it. It, you, it charges via USB right here. And you can mount this on a tripod. Like you guys can't see my tripod, but you can mount this on a regular tripod. The tripods are, I think, 15 bucks that you can get these for. But this right here is amazing. And it comes with all these attachments and stuff that you won't use if you use this for ventilating. You're not going to use any of these attachments. Um, but this is the little thing that allows you to mount this on the top of the camera. But I don't use any of that because I just mount this on a tripod and use it strictly for ventilating. And it's able to travel very nicely. So when I go and do my live events again, I hope soon, then I just bring my little pocket light so it works amazing. So I wanted to make sure I showed this to you guys because that could be another factor to that double knotting issue is not being able to see, okay? So it is the Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7 RGBW on camera light kit with diffuser and grid. You don't need all that diffuser and grid stuff unless you're really gonna use it for a camera, but I use it for ventilating. <sighs> okay, hey. Um, Rhonda said, I just finished first phase and was wondering the tools needed for our closures in phase two. So uh, that is a Lacewig University question. Here's a uh, Lacewig University students that are on here. We have a private live uh, that is going down on December. It's either the 10th or the 11th. An email is going out by the end of this week with all of the information where um, I'm going to set you up for the mentorship portion. And I'm going to do some deeper training on crown knotting as well on that live. So we're going to have fun. It's just going to be a welcome to the mentorship program type of live. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so all of that information, Rhonda, will be dropped in there. Okay. 
Um, all right. Do, 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 do. Did was fall out like loose hair. So tomorrow I'm getting braining to practice. Oh, I think you were continuing on another question that you had about uh, hair. Okay. Are we doing, are you going to be at the ISSE show? Yes, I am. And I'm teaching at ISSE this year. I'm teaching Ventilating 101. And I'm also teaching a marketing class called Fully Booked Blueprint. Please make sure to attend. It's going to be a lot of fun. I am super excited. Um, I was also a judge for Naha again this year, uh, which was, man, it was so hard. So hard ju <laughs> judging. I don't know if I can share the categories that I judge for, but it was hard. And I'm trying to, well, I won't say that yet. I'll wait and share that information later. But yes, I'm teaching at ISSE. I will drop some uh, information about that coming up very, very soon. Yes, yes. Come see me. I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. Oh, it's COVID. But just come see me and I can wave and I can air hug. <laughs> All right. Um, Ashley says, can you teach on coded, non-coded lace? Which do you prefer? So when it comes to coded and non-coded lace, um, Atlee Arbasi has different types of coatings on lace. And I don't know the names of the coatings off the top of my head. Um, I like coated lace a lot because it adds to the durability of film lace, lace that's already um, thin. And it makes it more durable. There's, I think it's double coated, three times coated. There's silk coating. There's different types of coatings for the different types of lace. I haven't worked with it a whole lot, but I did work with it a lot during the filming of Lace League University. And I really like it. And it is just as um, transparent as any other type of film lace, it just has a little bit of a coating. And you can tell it's a little bit more sturdy. It's not super stiff, but it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. All right. Um, let's see. Moving right along. Ariel, I know for a fact, I don't know of any other company that has it, but I know at Lee Arbasi has the coated lace. He even has coated lace sample booklets. All right. Could one use the handmade closure for a glueless machine wig? Of course. Yes, you absolutely can. You make a, a closure from scratch. Uh, you can use that for a glueless wig. In fact, this wig right here was glueless. I never glued this wig down at all. It was, um, I just popped this thing on and took it right off when I was, sometimes I'd take it off going down the road and scare people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Aisha, uh, oh wait, Alicia says, fully booked was a great read. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite, but that's a darn good book. It is about client attraction, how to get and keep clients and not chase them down. Oh, my goodness. Um, which is why I'm so excited to teach that class in January, because a lot of people have incredible skill, but they just don't know how to market themselves properly. They don't know how to get clients and keep clients. And so that's what that book and that class that I'm teaching in January is all about. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. And guess what? If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that a couple of, about a week ago, I posted a picture of my book that I am, I finally am in the last stages of completing. And that is Lace Wig Revolution. I am so so excited about Lace Wig Revolution. It is absolutely, <laughs> it's amazing. It's going to be my uh, most current print book once we release it. And you're going to absolutely love it. Um, obviously, 
COVID slowed me down a little bit. I was just talking to a friend about that today. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the book cover here in just a second. Excited about it, so I cannot wait. Um, yes, 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 yes. Okay, here's a question. Uh, I could not see the HD on top of the blue lace. So that's actually a really good point that you're making because not every tape is going to help make that lace visible. So sometimes I'll use um, green tape. I'm looking what I have over there. Blue, obviously. White sometimes works really well or masking tape and red and sometimes black. But with black, <laughs> with black, don't use black hair because you can't, it's going to disappear. Use, um, that's when you're doing something that is with blonde hair or something like that. All right. So just be mindful of that when you're, uh, when you're making these pieces and when you're blocking and doing all of that stuff for the prep work, test it out first, because I've made that mistake before blocking a whole piece and pinning it down and everything. And then I start ventilating and the hair just disappears because of the tape in the background. The tape is just meant, if people ask me all the time on Instagram, is that the scalp? No, it's not the scalp. It's the tape that allows you to see the lace. So, <laughs> it's important before you start, especially if it's lace that you're just like that you haven't worked with before, just put it up against a piece of tape and make sure you can see it first. All right. Put it up against the tape. Make sure you can see it first. I see Precious says that there's no audio, um, but I think everybody can hear. Yes, Precious, Lace Wig Revolution. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to your audio. Maybe. Um, go out and come back in. All right. Let's see. Sybil says, Marquetta, you are such a wonderful person watching you put, oh, <laughs> smile on my face because you're always smiling, you're laughing. And you are so, listen, I'm glad somebody else is laughing with me because sometimes I sit up here and I feel so goofy because I can't see anybody else laughing. Oh, I see y'all laughing now. I'm <laughs> joking. Him. That's funny. That, okay. That makes me laugh. Now I don't feel so silly. All right. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying some of those questions are like, come on now, you know, nobody has a green scalp or a red scalp or a blue scalp, but to each his own. All right. Uh, the audio. Oh, ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that was that my bad. So um, I'll fix that the next time. All right. My bad, you, you guys. My bad. All right. Um, let's see. Yep, I see it. Every time something's on the screen, you lose audio. Got it. Okay. All right, guys. It is um, It's time for me to sign off tonight. I had so much fun. So remember, let me just do a quick review of everything that I covered tonight. Before you approach making your closure piece from scratch, you must first determine the purpose. Then you choose the right hair depending upon the end result that you want. All right. Once you do that, then you want to make sure that you choose the right type of lace that is determined by the end result of the project. In my opinion, I will never tell you to use opera lace or French lace or base lace on a closure piece because it is just too thick. There may be different circumstances if you're ever working in television and film where you just have to for whatever reason but most of you are not making pieces for television and film you're making pieces for the everyday woman or for yourself so i'm always going to say either use a film lace or an hd lace and then you want to make sure that the sizing is very specific to your needs so again remember it does not have to be wide and thick it can be super skinny just enough that you need for a parted area or if you know they're going to want to move that part over 
then you have to build accordingly, all right? And all these things factor into your pricing, all right? So I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. We'll be right back here tomorrow where we will be building, we'll be mapping it out. So there's going to be a two camera shot tomorrow. I'm going to have uh, one camera here and there's going to be a camera here pointing to me. And then I'm going to measure it out, build it, pin it down, get the lace on there, all that good stuff. It'll be a very quick process tomorrow. I'm going to go through it quickly because I only have an hour. Um, but I'm going to quickly run through that tomorrow. And then on uh, Wednesday, tomorrow is Wednesday, Thursday, we start ventilating the piece. And so it's going to be absolutely amazing. Don't forget, if you haven't already, you got to join my text community. All right. The number is scrolling down below 702-707-4173. Um, I'm so excited for tomorrow. I cannot wait. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have an amazing night. God bless.